Have you guys noticed that when you're doing the PMs on these ESUs, that they're starting to creep? They're starting to get a little older, and they're probably not within spec. I know I noticed. I went through all the process of the calibration, and we're going to do it right here on the Fluke QA ES3 with you guys step by step. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we are going to go through a calibration on the Force FXC. Monopolar only, bipolar is almost the same process, but that's okay. We're only doing monopolar because monopolar is the only one that I'm really noticing that is just way off spec. And we're going to pull some of these guys back in. You're going to notice that I'm using this adapter plate. I covered it in one of my other videos. This adapter plate is a little bit different uh, compared to the one in that video because you can see right here I clipped off my dual pad detector and these leads are shorted together. So this is basically just a shorted together lead that comes back into here. You guys aren't going to have this. I get that. You're going to run one lead from here back to your low and you're going to run one lead from the far left of your monopolar plug one to your high. Or here, let's just pull it out and take a look at it. So your high is going to go to the left and your variable low is going to go to a shorted lead for your patient return. Me, I'm using this adapter plug. That way there, I don't have to use the foot control. And you guys are going to see why that is such a huge bonus with doing these calibrations. Because in other words, you're working your feet, you're working both your hands. That's just a little bit much to coordinate. With this system here, you utilize the power of the QAES3. You make it do the work and activate the ESU for you. And all you got to do is sit here and monkey around with the Valley Lab and get it back within spec. Okay? And I'm going to walk you guys through all that. So with my setup, all I have are two leads. You got your monopolar and then your patient return. So we're going to go ahead and plug those in to where they belong. And we're going to go ahead and run a baseline just to show you guys how far off this guy probably is. So we're going to go to gen output. We're going to turn it up to 300 ohms. And I'm going to crank it all the way up. Let's go up to 300. And let's go all the way up to 120. And start single. Oh man, yeah, this guy's off. You can see right here, I've got 253 watts. And let's go ahead and run coag. And we got a perfect 120 on coag. I hope this is uh, picking up in the video okay. So we're going to have to calibrate this guy because it is way off on that cut. Yeah, it's reading 251 this time. Alright guys, so to get into calibration mode, you're going to press the recall button. Your pure and desiccate. There we go. And it should show 1181 or something similar like that. And bipolar, this category over here, these are the different tests. So this number does not correlate to these ones. So you go up to test four, and this test is to calibrate your REM lead. We're gonna go to test number five. And you can see it starts out with this indicator over here on standard. That is for when you are gonna calibrate bipolar. I told you guys that we are not gonna do that today. We are gonna start right off with pure. Now, if you go through the service manual on this guy, it's going to have you hook up a current sense and uh, a bunch of other stuff. You don't need that, guys. You don't need the voltmeter. You don't need the current sense because the QAES3 does it all for you. You see this number right here? It actually has 915 milliamps right here. So it's the milliamps that we're going to pay attention to. We're on pure. You also set your load resistors through the dial right here. 
Now, I know I've talked a little bit of trash about the QA ES3, but let me tell you guys one thing it does do rather well. It has a very good selection of load resistors, and we're going to utilize those to calibrate. It's going to be awesome, okay? So the first thing we're going to start off with is we're going to go down to 10 ohms. So make sure you put it on 10 ohms. You're going to press the pure button, and when I activate it, it's going to be the same thing as when you push the cut pedal. So normally you would have the monopolar foot control down at your feet, and you're going to press and hold the cut while you make your adjustments, okay? So I don't have to do that. You're gonna see me just hit start continuous and I am going to adjust it to 1250 milliamps plus or minus eight. Okay, we're gonna do that right now. Okay, my current is 1264 and you guys heard, I. We got to get it to 1250 plus or minus 8, so it needs to come down a little bit. You're going to adjust that through these buttons right here or these buttons right here. These ones are going to adjust it in hundreds. These ones here are going to adjust the single digits. So we are just going to go ahead and take it down. You notice as I press down, the current actually goes up. So now we're going to go up. Oh, look at that. 1259 milliamps. I'm getting better. Okay, there might be a little bit of a lag, so you'll see me take a pause and I'll just sit there and stare at it. So we're at 1249 milliamps. I'm gonna go ahead and press stop. You've seen that it went to 1248 at the very last second. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna do it again, just to be sure. I always do these tests redundantly, so you'll see me run a long test where I adjust it and then I'm just going to verify it by doing it again. So you're going to depress the foot control and remember we got to get it to 1250 plus or minus 8 milliamps. So I'm sitting at 1248, 1247. Okay, looks like 1247 is round as close as we're going to get it. So I'm going to go ahead and press stop and we're gonna to move to the next test. So the very next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to blend. So you press the blend button and now we have to adjust it to 1000 milliamps plus or minus eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and press start continuous again. And it is, wow, this is the first time it's ever happened. I'm at nine, uh, I'm at 1,000 to 999. So it knows where it's at on the blend current. So we're good there. Right now, what we're gonna do is we have to go to the next test. So you are gonna press the bipolar up. This is gonna take us to the voltage sense gain. And this is test number six. So you'll see a six right here. And now we have to adjust to 3,000 ohms. So here's where we're gonna come over and we're gonna turn it all the way up to 3,000. It's so nice having these internal load resistors for these cows, makes this so easy. All right, and just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and press pure and that puts us over into monopolar calibration mode. And now we have to adjust it to 216 milliamps plus or minus three. So this is gonna be very sensitive. So we're gonna try and get this as exact as possible. All right, I'm all set with 3000 ohms. We're gonna start continuous. And it looks like we're at 196. We have to get it to 216. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the macro adjustment, which is right here. Okay, it jumped to 204, 211, 212, and now I'm going to go over here and start adjusting these. 213, 215, 
Okay, looks like 215 is about as good as it's going to get. I'm going to give it a second, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do another burn. Okay, it's right at 215. We are well within spec. Remember it said 216 plus or minus 3 milliamps. We are good. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Next, we are going to hit the blend button. And now we are going to go ahead and adjust the load resistor to 2,000 ohms. Right, we're at 2,000 ohms. We're on blend. Now we have to get it to 300 milliamps plus or minus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start continuous. You guys would depress the cut on the foot control. And we are off by a wee bit. We're at 257 milliamps. So I'm going to use the macro adjustments. 260, 273. Okay, I'm at 304. So I'm real close right now. So I'm going to go to the minor adjustments. 302. Mind you, I'm looking at that number right there. The second one down. 301. Two ninety nine. Okay, I'm going to stop it. We're going to give it a, a moment to rest. And the reason I'm giving it a moment to rest is because I have noticed change before. If you go ahead and do an immediate burn again, you will get a big change. So I just go ahead and allow it to normalize. And then we're going to go ahead and hit start continuous and check it again. We're at 300 milliamps. That is spot on. Look at that. I'm going to stop it. So we need to be at 300 plus or minus 3 milliamps. We are good to go. Now I'm going to hit the bipolar up button. And it's going to take us to test number 7. And now we are going to test the reactance gain. So we have to put our load resistor at 200 ohms. All the way down to 200. All right, we're at 200. I have to hit the pure button. And now we have to get it to 949 plus or minus three milliamps. So I'm gonna hit start continuous. I'm at 930 milliamps. I have to get it to 949. So I'm gonna use the macro adjustment. All right, I'm at 928, 929, 930, 931. Oh, I'm at 950. That's really close. I'm gonna go to the minor adjustment. Remember, I'm looking for 949 plus or minus three milliamps. So you heard that it timed out. If you take too long doing the test, it's going to do that. That's okay. All you got to do is hit the go button again, and let's keep going. 951. All right, let's take it down a wee bit. I'm at 952, 953. All right, you can see that it takes a long time to get these adjustments in, but it's very, very precise. I'm going to go back to macro adjustments. I'm at 952, 942. Woo! You see how it jumps around? That's why this takes so long. I'm at 947. That's close. That's real close. I like that. We're technically within spec right now. 
Okay, I'm at 9.47. I could technically stop. I'm going to try and get it to 9.48 or 9.49. Let's give it just a moment. Alright, 9.46. Nine forty seven, nine forty eight, all right. I'm at nine forty eight, and I'm going to go ahead and call that good. All right, now we have to hit the blend button, and we need to get it to within one thousand plus or minus ten milliamps. So, this one's not so bad. I'm at 1,044. You guys are going to see me playing with these buttons going up and down. That's because on some tests, if you hit up, it takes your current up. And in other tests, you hit up, and it will actually make your current go down. It's really awkward. So that's why I just run it while I'm watching it. 946. 942. Okay, uh, I'm at 1024. Okay, there we go. 1005. Let's give it a moment. I'm right right in there. I'm really close. All right. 1006. One thousand five. Now we're getting better. One thousand two. You can see it. It's teetering all over the place over there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call it. I'm at. It's teetering between one thousand and six, one thousand seven. That's as close as we're going to get. It's going between 1,005 and 998. All right, we're going to give it a moment. And now I'm going to do one final burn just to be sure. And we are done with calibration. And 199, 1,003. That's good. All right, guys. And to save your calibration, you're going to go ahead and hit up on your bipolar and it's going to go to test number eight that saved your settings now you can power it off i'm going to use this time to set my analyzer back to 300 ohms and we're going to power it on and we're going to do some tests and see how good we got it because remember before it was hitting uh, 250 251 watts on cut max while it was set at 300 and that is horrible so let's see how close we can get it now we're at 300 watts coags 120 let's go ahead and start we're at 287 now that is within spec we are good to go remember before it was at 250 Coag 114, we're good. Let's take it down to 200. Let's take this guy down to 80. One ninety two watts, seventy six point seven. 
All right, guys, that is a monopolar calibration on the Force FXC. Force FX, Force FXC, they're the same thing. Ah, oh, it's tedious. I know this is a 20 minute long video. Could you imagine doing this to like 40 or 50 of these guys like I've been doing? <laughs> well, there you guys have it. It's in the manual if you want to, or you can just run through this video. I just ran through um, and jotted down everything from uh, the manual as I seen it. And I'm going to go ahead and type this up as a formal test because this is verbatim out of the manual. And it just got rid of all the other garbage. Now, guys, that's how you test it using the Fluke QA ES3. Use the internal load resistors and go ahead and use this guy to do your calibration. It makes it so much easier. And I would be absolutely exhausted if I had to run through all the jumpers. Luckily, I had this block, so it automatically triggers, and I don't have to use the foot control. I'm digging out foot controls for every single ESU. Oh, that would get old real quick. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been a tedious, tedious, tedious endeavor going through my whole facility and calibrating all these old Force FXs. But as of today, I am finally done. Thanks for watching, guys.